Well, the Fed announcing it will continue pumping money into the economy while leaders in Washington still can't balance the budget. Our next guest spent years battling policies like these when he was congressman. Will his legacy live on? Joining me now in a Fox Business exclusive is the man, the legend, former congressman, Dr. Ron Paul. Dr. Paul, great to, great to hear from you. How are you. What have you been doing with your time since you left Congress? Uh, just waiting on you to call. Well, so I, I'm delighted to hear from you. We're going to call because... every day from now. You're going to get <laughs> oh, sick of me. Minute. You're no, going to get sick. Pre- I've been pretty busy traveling, talking about uh, what other thing can I talk about? I talk about the Fed and the economy and fixing interest rates and all the bizarre things that we've been living with and yeah. why why the Fed helped us run up that deficit, all those kind of things well, what, I think that you've heard about. Before. One thing that you haven't been doing, unfortunately, is grilling Ben Bernanke like you used to do when, when you were a House member. And there was one classic exchange between you and Ben Bernanke. Uh, well, let's just play the exchange, and then I want to get you to react to it and current events. Play the exchange. <laughs> Do you think gold is money? No. It's not money. It's Even a, it's if it had been metal. money for 6,000 years, somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's an asset. I mean, it's the same. Would you say treasury bills are money? I don't think they're money. So, so Ben Bernanke doesn't think gold is money or a currency. But when you look at what happened in Cyprus, where a government was considering, and it still may do it to some extent, going into your bank accounts and literally confiscating money that you have already earned and already paid taxes on, don't you think that more people in the world are going to think of gold as money? Absolutely, and that's the nature of government. When they get into trouble, they either try to raise taxes, which is confiscation, but this is a little bit more blatant on the way they were doing it. But, you know, I'm just wondering what's going to happen, whether they're going to even open up those banks again. Instead of arguing whether they're going to take 6% or 10%, they might be arguing, when are we ever going to open up these banks again? So I'm sure it'll happen, but they, they have those concerns. But we're not immune uh, from these kind of things. I mean, it happened in the Depression and different times. So, yes, the ultimate uh, test is money, not because I think it's money, but because history has proven that. And if you want to really know the ultimate money, think of the countries that get into trouble and people try to leave their borders. Do you think you can give a paper dollar or a paper currency right, to, get, right. to bribe somebody at the border? No, you need gold because gold is the ultimate money. Well, Ben Bernanke today was being questioned a lot about QE2, about bond purchasing, printing money to purchase government bonds, which, of course, helps the politicians uh, pay for things it doesn't have money for. But uh, that idea of quantitative easing is kind of running out of juice. And even people that had been supporting of a Bernanke are saying so now. Do you think that that policy might change in the coming months? It's, it's going to change, but not because they want to do it deliberately. Because let's say today he would have announced, well, we have a new policy, we think we've overdone it, and we are just not, uh, we're going to gradually withdraw. We're only going to buy 80 next month and, and 50 the next month. I think that would have panicked the stock market. What we're witnessing now is the results of this wild quantitative easing, pumping all the money into the bonds and the stocks. At the same time, we have 50,000 people in New York City. They, they're homeless. Right. We have 48 million people on food stamps. And free market economists claim, and I tend to believe them, that the real unemployment rate is probably closer to 22 percent. So this pumping and quantitative easing has not solved our problem. Well, and you mentioned the stock market. Obviously, it has helped the stock market go to greater heights because uh, you, you feed free money to the stock market, and then they love it. They can borrow at no, no interest rates and, and make more money on deals, et cetera. But sometimes a company's stock will go higher when they fire people. That happened recently with American Express. They fired thousands of people. Their stock went up 5 6% in one day. Uh, doesn't trying to prop up the stock market uh, contradict Ben Bernanke's policy of keeping unemployment down? Yeah, and I think there's two reasons for markets uh, stocks to go up. One might be because the country, the company is cleaning up its act and maybe firing people they don't need, or they just a lot of money there uh, participating in a bubble, such as with houses or in stock, or especially like in the Nasdaq. But no, that's where the money, the money is going, and fixing the price of money is the big deal. You know, I'm fascinated with, and many times I've watched these press releases where they go down second by second, and what is the announcement? on probably the most right. important price 
in the whole world. And most economists declare we don't believe in price fixing, but this is price fixing at its worst, and everybody hangs on that, and Wall Street hangs on it, yet it's completely foreign to the free market. Dr. Paul, we only have about 20 seconds, but as I said, people around the world realizing the currency is not where they want to put their trust anymore. When you look at Cyprus, you look at what's happening here. Do you think the voters might turn to a, uh, back to a gold standard or something where, where the currency you use is worth its weight in gold? I, I really think so, because that's what history has shown, that ultimately, once uh, once a government destroys its currency, they have to go back to something more trustworthy than a politician's promise. And I go to a lot of campuses. The, the younger generation are very much attuned to this, because I think they understand monetary policy a lot better than my generation did when we were in college. Dr. Ron Paul, always great. To, we will call you more frequently. Good to, good to hear. By the way, right. how's, how's your son doing? Anything you disagree with him well, on? I, I think he's catching on pretty well, you know. So, no, I think he's doing great. You, you're, you're for his immigration policy? I, I haven't read all of that yet. Okay. <laughs> and I've written, I've written my policy up, and I think it, it does pick up a lot of, in my book, Liberty Fine. I have a whole, whole chapter in that. It, it's not the easiest subject for anybody to deal no. with, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. tough nut. Dr. Ron Paul, good to see you. Thanks a lot.